Okay, this is the third video installment in the North Carolina final exam for Math 2 in 2014 released test. Um, video 1 has numbers 1 through 4, video 2 has numbers 5 through 9, and video 3 will start with number 10. Farmer Brown built a rectangular pen for his chickens using 12 meters of fence. He used part of one side of his barn as one length of the rectangular pen. He maximized the area using the 12 meters of the fence. Okay, so what that means is here we have the barn. Okay, and then up against the barn he built a fence. Okay, total if you add up all the fencing it's 12 meters. Okay, um, so uh, one way to express this, and there's several ways to do this problem. The easiest way though is to say that each of the sides right here would be equal to x which means that this side, since when you add these three together, you get 12, is going to be 12 minus 2x, okay? All right, and then Farmer Johnson built a rectangular pen for her chickens using 16 meters of fence. She also used part of one side of her barn as the length, just like Farmer Brown did, okay? Um, so here's the barn here, again, okay, and for Farmer Johnson, she built her pen, okay, it says the length of her pen, all right, the length of her pen was two meters more than the length of Farmer Brown's pen, all right, so that means here's Farmer Brown's pen, right, Farmer Brown's pen was 12 minus 2x for the length, okay, it says that her pen was two meters more than that length, so here's Farmer Brown's and then it's going to be two meters more. So that would make it 14 minus 2x for the length, okay? The width of her pen was one meter more than the width of Farmer Brown's. So the width of Farmer Brown's was x, and then it was one meter more. Okay. Now, it's talking about the fact that he maximized the area of 12 meters, okay? And same thing, Farmer Johnson maximized the area of hers too. All right, and then they want to know how much larger is Farmer Johnson's rectangular pen than Farmer Brown's, all right? The key word here is maximum. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, use two functions based on the area of the pens. We're going to find the maximum in the calculator and then we're going to compare the maximums, okay? So if you look at Farmer Brown's, right, the area of Farmer Brown's if you multiply the two sides, would be x times 12 minus 2x. Okay, the area of Farmer Johnson's would be x plus 1 times 14 minus 2x. Okay, so I'm going to graph both of these in the calculator and find the maximums, and then we're going to compare the maximums because it says how much larger is Farmer Johnson's than Farmer Brown. The y value and the maximum is going to give us our area because the x is a distance and the y is going to be the area. All right, so let's graph these and look at the maximums. I'm going to clear out what I had in there before. Okay, so for the first one, x and then 12 minus 2x. Now I could have multiplied this out and put it in, but I don't have to. Okay, in order to graph it where I can see it, I'm going to press zoom zero. Okay, and then in order to find the maximum, I do second and then trace. Select number four, the maximum. Now I have to mark boundaries. So right here it's asking me for a left boundary. So my cursor is to the left of the highest point. So I'm going to press enter. Now it asks me for a right boundary. So I'm going to move my cursor to the right side of the highest point, the right side of the maximum, and mark a right boundary. Okay, I'm to the right of the maximum, so I'm going to press enter. Then I press enter again, and it tells me what the maximum is. Okay, remember I'm taking the y value because I'm comparing the areas. So the area for Farmer Brown is 18 um, meters squared. Okay, now I'm going to do the same for Farmer Johnson. So I'm going to type in that one, x plus 1 and 14 minus 2x. Oh. 
Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Okay, press zoom at zero to graph it. And again, I'm going to find the maximum. So second trace, maximum. Make sure my cursor over here is on the left side, so I can press enter. And then scroll it to the right side to mark the right boundary. Sometimes this takes a little bit. Okay, and then press enter again in order to get the maximum. Okay, and remember I'm taking the y value, so that's going to be 32. So the area of Farmer Johnson's is 32 square meters. Now, they asked me for the difference, right? They said, how much larger is Farmer Johnson's? So I'm going to do 32 minus 18, and the difference is 14 meters squared. So that's the difference in theirs. So that's how much larger Farmer Johnson's is than Farmer Brown. Like I said, there are several ways to solve this problem. This, is, this has the least steps. But this is probably the most difficult one on the um, practice exam. Okay, number 11. Um, the function f of x equals 85 over x models the volume of a gas in a balloon under x units of pressure at a constant temperature, which best describes the domain of, of f of x. Okay, so when it's asking here, which best describes the domain, the domain is asking for basically what x values can you use in this problem. Okay, now I want you to think about all of the numbers on the number line, okay, starting with the left. So we have negative numbers, all right. Um, in this equation right here, it said that it's modeling the volume. Okay, if you plug in any negative numbers in for x, sorry, if you plug in any negative numbers in for x, it's going to give you a negative volume. Okay, volume is a measurement of space. It cannot be negative. Okay, so you can't plug in any negative numbers for x. All right, um, let's talk about zero. If you plugged in zero for x, okay, if you plugged in zero for x, it's going to do 85 divided by 0. You can't divide by 0. It would give you an undefined amount. Okay, so x so far can't be ne anything negative, and it also can't be 0. All right, let's talk about positive numbers. If I were to plug in some positive numbers in there, then it would just give me a volume, a positive volume. And that's okay. So basically, X can be any number that's positive. So if I look at my options right here, the one that says that is C, okay? Because C says that X, all the X values have to be greater than zero, all right? Um, they all have to be positive. Now, it doesn't have to stop at 85, okay? Your volume can be a decimal. If you plug in like 100 in there, you're going to get 0.85 for the volume, and that's fine. You can have a decimal for a volume. Um, for D, it can't be D because X cannot be equal to zero, just like we found out right there. It would be undefined. Okay, so the only answer that could work is C. Number 12, a rectangular rug is placed on a rectangular floor. Okay, so we have a floor, okay, and then on that floor we have a rug. And they're both rectangles, it said. Okay. Um, the width of the floor is four feet greater than the length. Okay. So because the width is four feet greater, the width is actually longer in this problem. So the width is going to be here. And the length is going to be down the side. Okay. So on the floor, it says that it's four feet greater than the length x. So it tells us what the length is. The length is x. And it says that the width of the floor down here is four feet greater than that. Then it says the width of the rug is two feet less than the width of the floor. Well, the width of the floor is x plus two, and so the width of the rug, it said it's two feet less than that. So it would be x plus two, because we take four and subtract two from it. Then it says the length of the rug, that's right here, is four feet less than the width of the rug. So our width is x plus two. It's four feet less than that, so I'm going to subtract four, and that's going to give me x minus two. All right, so which function represents the area of the floor not covered by the rug? So that means it's looking for this, basically, the area of the floor that's not covered by the rug. 
Okay. In order to get that, all right, I'm going to do the area of the floor, and then I'm going to subtract the area of the rug, and that will give me what's left over, that space that we just shaded in with yellow. Okay. So first, the area of the floor. All right. In order to get the area of the floor, I'm going to multiply the length and the width of the floor. All right. So that's going to be x times x plus 4. So if I distribute my x, I'm going to get x squared plus 4x. Okay, so that's the area of the floor. Then I'm going to find the area of my rug, and that's going to be the length times the width of that. Okay, I'm going to box multiply these. You can also do FOIL or you can do double distribution. Doesn't matter. Those actually cancel. Minus 4. Okay, so remember I'm doing the area of the floor minus the area of the rug. Okay, so the area of the floor is x squared plus 4x minus the area of the rug. Okay, so if I do x squared minus x squared, those are going to cancel. Okay, and then I have 4x. There's no, there's no like term over here, so I'm just going to bring that down, 4x. Then I have minus a negative 4. Those two negatives cancel to give me a positive 4. And that's the area of the space that we colored in with yellow right there. All right, number 13. Now, I drew a hexagon on here. You do not have a hexagon on your um, paper, so you would just have to know that a hexagon has six sides and then draw it out. Okay, um, so it says, which rotation will carry a, rectang a regular hexagon onto itself? Okay, so here's the thing. In a hexagon, you have six sides. Okay. Um, in a circle, there are 360 degrees in a circle. Now, if you take this hexagon, it has six sides. If you divide that 360 degrees by six sides, okay, it will tell you 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. That means that there's 60 degrees in each of these right here. So if you had an octagon, you would divide by eight, right? Or if you had a... Um, Pentagon, you would divide by 5. Since we had a hexagon, we divide it by 6 because it's 6 sides. Okay, That means if you take this um, hexagon, every time you rotate it 60 degrees, it's going to line back up again. So basically, when it says which rotation will carry it onto itself, you can rotate it 60 degrees or any multiple of 60. All right, so if we look at our answers, the only one that is a multiple of 60 is C, 120 degrees counterclockwise. All right, number 14. Kathleen rotated an isosceles trapezoid 360 degrees around its longest base. So I know an isosceles trapezoid looks like this. Okay, and again, this isn't drawn perfectly to scale. But if it's isosceles, then both of those legs are congruent. All right, if I rotate it around its longest base, that means that this is the longest base right here. So this is going to stay put, but the rest of it is going to start rotating around this axis, okay? And it's kind of hard to describe in a 2D fashion or kind of hard to draw, okay? But imagine that this part, this top part, were to come out of the screen towards you and then were to rotate back into the screen and around through the back so that it would be rotating 360 degrees, okay? So it's going to come out of the screen and then it'll go back into the screen, okay? And as it's rotating, it leaves a solid in its path. The one that it would look like would be C. Okay, this concludes um, the third video. Um, we'll start the fourth video with number 15.